Hi, everybody. Hi. So, well, this guy you see here is Mario Di Dio, and me behind the camera is Vincenzo Pellegrini. What we're going to show you right now is something we've just achieved. You probably do remember that a few years ago, actually two, I brought to WSR08 in Cosfrew the demonstration of a fully software, a completely standard SDVT modulator. Well, that fully software modulator is still here. And this is the USRP, which is producing the signal. So, okay. Mr. Didio, please start the modulator. Great. So, we've just now started the modulator and we're modulating 11.612 megabits per second, which we are sending out through a standard HDVT signal from here. And here we have a standard receiver, which just receives our signals. This is channel 1. You see channel 1 in here. This is channel 2. Channel 3. Channel 4. Oh, well, channel 4 is very cool. And channel 1 again. Okay, so this is the hardware receiver. Uh, nothing so new up to now. You've seen this several other times, uh, both in videos and on demos. But here, we have something new. Here we just do have, well, uh, this uh, USRP1 with its own aerial. Uh, and then, well, the USRP is receiving our signal, which goes through this cable here into this host computer here, which is right below the receiver. Uh, well, within this computer you have a standard um, Intel a Q9400 processor, CPU. So, okay, and in here we have something new, which is a fully software etcdbbt receiver, uh, which is based on the USRP, uh, which, well, uh, is enabled by a new software radio technology, which we call MA, and we will discuss later. Mr. Didio, please. <laughs> so, okay, the receiver has been started. Please focus. Come on. So this is the receiver which was started. And this is M player, which is receiving same signal as we're having in here. So this is M player receiving the signal. Here you can see the bit error ratio of the thing. Okay, so a bit less white on the screen, so ju 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 just to show a bit less flicker. So you see the bit error ratio and the video being demodulated and played by M player. Bit error ratio is still zero. So here we have the receiver and here we have the other output. Again, here we have the receiver. Come on, please focus. Come on, camera, focus. Okay, my camera is a bit slow with the focus. Here we have, again, well, same scene being played by M player. Come on, focus. Okay. And so here you can still watch the bit error ratio and all other parameters of the thing. So, uh, well, we can do this again. We just shut down the receiver. Oh, well, <laughs> uh, we can actually first just try to shut down our transmission. Transmission is down. Transmission is down here. And then we just go to the receiver and we see that the bit error rate starts to grow video is stuck and we have one half of bit error ratio so we can iterate this again please make sure the DR is start the transmitter no, so now we are restarting the transmitter yes, it's up. 
So the transmitter is up? Yes. Oh, great. <laughs> so we have the transmitter up right now. We have... Okay, images again on the hardware receiver. And now, we get back to this. And again we have bit error ratio, which is zero, and the modulation gets started. It stays there. And it's nearly perfect. So the thing is, uh, how this was possible? Well, let's have a look at the computational load of the thing. You probably can read this, it says 44%. It says 44% of processor being used for presenting the images and for demodulating this 11.612 megabits per second radio frequency trans well radio frequency transmitted MPEG2 transport stream which is coming from this USRP here. All this is only possible due to the use of a software radio implementation technique. I would actually dare to say a technology which we call NA and we, which we will outline briefly during our presentation of SRDVB which is, which is this receiver here in Karlsruhe and which we'll, we will detail further in upcoming scientific publications on this kind of technology. Thing is we are managing to demodulate correctly fully in real time uh, 11.612 megabits per second transport stream on an Intel Q9400 by taking less than 50% now we're just taking 38 now we're taking 55 now we're taking 66 now 44 however I would say averagely less than 50% of the computational power which is available over a general purpose GPU, CPU which is quite cheap and well ordinary stuff there is no ASIC in here, there is no FPGA, there is no nothing all signal processing in here is being done on the host computer so now we've just switched off the transmission and uh, we have this uh, one half there. Thank you for watching and we'll hope to see you in class through with this demo.